Israel arrests U.S. journalists, fires on U.N. peacekeepers, bombs Beirut, kills more kids, etc. I used to be able to write individual articles about the individual bad things the U.S. empire is involved in around the world. These days, I'm increasingly finding it necessary to cram a bunch of them into a single daily write-up to touch on as many of them as I can just to stay on top of things. Israel has arrested the Grey Zone's Jeremy Lafredo, an American journalist who had recently done some on-the-ground reporting on last week's Iranian missile strikes in Israel. Israeli news outlet Ynet reports that the charges against Lafredo include aiding the enemy during wartime and providing information to the enemy, which, as his fellow Grey Zone reporter Kit Clarenberg notes, can be punished by the death penalty in Israel. The Grey Zone has further clarified in a statement that officially Israeli police are holding the reporter on suspicion of serious security offenses for publicly publishing the locations of missile drops near or inside sensitive security facilities, with the aim of bringing this to the notice of the enemy and thereby assisting them in their future attacks. Lafredo's report on the missile strikes features footage of explosions at the IDF's Nevatim Air Base, as well as shots of the location where a missile landed near the headquarters of the Israeli intelligence agency Mossad. Imagine if an Iranian missile landed right next to the CIA headquarters, and the U.S. said it was forbidden on pain of death to report anything about this major news story, even for foreign journalists. Interestingly, these same things have been reported on by other foreign news outlets without any arrests being made. As journalist Dan Cohen noted on Twitter, a report from Nick Schifrin of PBS News also featured footage of the blast site near Mossad headquarters, but Schifrin has not been arrested. Perhaps Lafredo is being singled out more because the Grey Zone has been reporting on Israel's lies and criminality than because of his work in this specific instance. As of this writing, Lofredo is still jailed. In other news, Axios reports that the U.S. and Israeli governments have moved closer to a consensus on Israel's coming major attack on Iran, with the Biden administration accepting that this major escalation is going to happen despite fears that it will spark a large-scale war. The Biden administration accepts that Israel will soon launch a major attack on Iran, but it fears that strikes on certain targets could dramatically escalate the regional war, writes Axios's Barak Ravid. A UN inquiry has accused Israel of extermination because of its systematic destruction of Gaza's healthcare system via relentless and deliberate attacks on medical personnel and facilities. Here's a quote from a UN press release. The report found that Israeli security forces have deliberately killed, detained, and tortured medical personnel and targeted medical facilities while tightening their siege on Gaza and restricting permits to leave the territory for medical treatment. These actions constitute the war crimes of willful killing and mistreatment and of the destruction of protected civilian property and the crime against humanity of extermination. If past behavior is a reliable indicator, the U.S. will now dismiss these accusations, and Israel will promptly accuse the United Nations of anti-Semitism. Israeli forces repeatedly fired on U.N. peacekeepers in southern Lebanon on Thursday, injuring two U.N. workers by causing them to fall from a tower that was struck. Israel has killed hundreds of U.N. humanitarian workers in Gaza over the past year, but extending these attacks to the UN interim force in Lebanon is a significant new addition to the list of Israeli criminality. Israeli airstrikes in a densely populated residential area of central Beirut have reportedly killed at least 22 people, injuring at least 117. Israel killed at least 28 people in an airstrike on a school where civilians have been sheltering in Gaza, reportedly including many women and children as per usual. Al Jazeera reports that they're having trouble identifying and counting the dead because the bodies are so unrecognizably shredded. Dozens more were killed elsewhere in Gaza over the last 24 hours. And then there's the New York Times report we discussed yesterday, adding to the mountains upon mountains of evidence that Israeli forces are routinely, deliberately shooting Palestinian children in the head throughout the Gaza Strip. There is too much evidence that this is happening for anyone to legitimately deny it at this point. Today, the U.S. State Department did not hold a press briefing, which is understandable. 
If I were in charge of justifying the behavior of the U.S. government and its allies, I wouldn't want to face the press today, either.